Sorry guys, I was trying to log on to this computer because I was trying to log on so I was trying to log on to the computer and see how best we can uh, make this presentation. Yanga ya kuramba kuloga pa 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 phone, but luckily we are in now. We are in now. Oh, checking yambondi zimira. Sorry guys, I had visitors. No na. Yeah, I I can only move one. When you go on a time, you know what plan a time yako. Could you go at Zakat and do for Nak Sangan and Nevan? Hola, 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 tapinda. Please out for Nak Sangan and one who Zakat. So, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. You end up a pass where I am Z. Sandazuka and a pass never in Z. Kakurukura, so that's Kurukura. So sweet out it. No no go tanga. Listening. Thank you so much. And Raoul, indeed, I apologize to a, a, a colleague who blocked me this morning. I know the around four five when I was blocked. And I wanna want my wedding pictures. One watch. Manya watch it. Ah, makoroko to makoroko to. Saka na kumanya wana kata, ah, makoro kutu wakumana, hey, hindi zino fadza. Ono zaati wana kana wachata, zino fadza, stered. Zino fadza. Ewa wana wachinja wana kutu makoro kutu makoro kutu kani ono uzo manye mwe. Because, eh, kuna wama waiti, waiti, waiti marriage is achievement. Musa nyepa, guys. Marriage is an achievement. Azure wako tika na usi na urombe. Ah, ah. Time ya kwe nge seta kwana, hindi marriage is an age. No matter what age, you can still get married. And you can have a room on the Aurora at at any age. Vakaza one and the other is they grow up as well. It's the age. Vakaza one and the other is they grow up as well. It's the age. Vakaza one and the other is they grow up as well. And so forth. So I went to page zero and got ah makoro koto. So I looked closely to the lad. Ah, uh, nada The girl, the lad is my ex. The uh, my ex. Saga. Nada to mshaya ga. Abuza chinga. Eh, geza geza. Anzi nasi weekend to go terera. Shirwa mamba. Rova i mamba. Varuwa mamba. Rova i mamba. Varuna mata na mati sa. So I looked closely at the picture. Kata confess we are chatting man. Yes, it has a son. Ah, 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 ah. They are all come on. Ah, come on. Baga yi paga na assembly. Ah, na ro. Oh, oh, oh. You, you, moon, you. You, moon. This lady is my ex. So, it's good to congratulate your ex. Say, ah, congratulations. Because I achieve for something. Perhaps she aimed to achieve that with me, and unfortunately did not work. Because we were that we were not that we fun. It did not work the way we wanted it to to work. Saga or alone, I don't know. She wasn't married. Probably I go funga or break up. I'm gonna ship out or probably I got one of my heart breaks. Pack it up. Because can now finally she got someone, and I was so happy to see her in a wedding gown. Agaungani ruani van, kumsha kuwarutu imbamro rata uyana yeni magumbi, zimuro rata uyana yemuro rata, na yemuro rata uyana yeni magum. Every boy na shipa, da uyana. Chao 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 chao. This nengi tuba friend baba. Chao 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 da uyana yeni magumbi. It's interesting. 
uh, to have your ex girlfriend getting married and wedding. Baka ipo man. Ah, she was a mumu. She started a mumu. She was a mumu. Ah, Iba Baba, no banana on that small no shanda. Eh, she started a mumu. She was a mumu. Eh, Sagano, no, she was a go. I watch and get a guys. Msazote, Zera would dance. Eh, the Zorora second end wife. Your second end food in room. <laughs> ah, mother needs you. So, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we let's finalize this report now. We want to finalize the report and and make a seal on it. We'll be waiting just for uh, the copies. Could was my copy, was chi and it more. So let me not waste time. Both sixteen minutes as a size. The utipeze. The presentation, Saga, to go to Grapaga, and Mukoma, and Oro, and Zeni, Zon, Nagi, the Zon. I wish that I end up Panyanguayan, and I wish you got me training. This is Zamaida. Honestly, Brian, um, Nas Natara, a very important man, very, very important man in my life. And I mean, the mentor is one friend, the young, she bad, Bumira, Botar, no Kuru, or Pana. Saganda moon and Gatora and I, I, I was on Dara Magan Batsira Zuna Nas. I still wish good. I'm Dara Wang, good come on, I'm Dara Wang. I'm not going to say a lot about it, but I'm happy. Good in the Tower and Mkuru, Mkuru and Okoshe, Savage and Gamona. I bow my head with Magadi Baba, Magadi Mkoma. You understand? You know, no, Gadaro, Panyago, you don't forget. Uh, so, Jaran, I know I want a Nash and I store a brew. You would kind of ex girlfriend, they are all right. A Munita Makoro Koto, because we got a Kodo no royal. Sagamona was his own doctor, took a linda, Masaras, Gansakumana, Mano Agatakura. A canapasins banemuna, name where I lig you. I just watch you, Linda Masara and Gatakura. Would what you shatter? Would you worry? Would you bava? A potse potsin, a ruy babu. Saga anga is tower on August tower and the Roman Sam Daro so Sazi Shepard. You munanzu with seats too. Um, go on, Chris, how are you? Can you munanzu with seats, Shepard? They were at Terra Pa Moslane Commission. No boy won out Uru, you watch Uripo. As near Pagot, MDC would train a Maribios, good Deben, and Zambia, MDC as we just say. As near Pound, I would like younger and I could write one on MDC. As near Pasha, we near Pasha. Sagan Anga is holding Ambisirwa. Gunyepa kwe se kwa ita kwe ya kwe. Anga ori kudaku. Anga kuri kudaku. 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 Kutikwati kwati ne zanu pev. Ati vara shimba hava. Anyway, that is not topic of the day. So let's finalize our uh, report on Chitepo assassination. This is episode 7, which is the end of the... Um, uh, report. So what did actual what did Kenneth Kaunda actually do? Or what did Kenneth Kaunda actually say? Uh, this is what we are going to read now. That uh, it was appendix is appendix one. President Kaunda's message to the nation. He was talking to the nation of Zambia where the freedom fighters were hosted and Zambia was a host country. So it was under the leadership of Kenneth Kaunda. So let's hear what Kenneth Kaunda said. Uh, Gracie, how are you? Atete. And Nunoka. And so, Auna Nunoka, Shango Tanga, we just started. Because Nadine never ends, so we just started. So, what I'm doing is uh, we are uh, going to start now. Mm, we are going to start now. Good. Uh, Good. <laughs> so we are going to start now, ladies and gentlemen. To now the zichkise, tita zita pire zichkise. So what did Kenneth Kaunda do or say? This is what we are. And say say you, the Alex. Ziri say I'm going to send. I'm going to go more drug change than the. 
chengeta ndevu Alex chengeta mari blas anzo ngoma sheba kuti muri sei muri pa topic ipi ndiri pa mukoma enzo ndiri pa i am discussing about uh, but this is episode 7 the end of a report uh, on the assassination of Herbert Chitepo before i start reading what what actually Kenneth Kaunda said um i had a dream i had a dream yesterday when i was dreaming and the garota Herbert Chitepo achiomberero rachiti mukanya 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 you understand saka aitange munhu ari kushika Amenu kwa anga achiba, asa anga kaneta, anga peka sutu, anga keta grey, ya kaza zara madaga, sutu yoyo. Saka anga achi anga chifamba, achi pinda mumusha, pamusha pa anga achi pinda andi pazi. Saka wana wangwa ripo wangwa chuombero, achi mkanya, bada anga chifamba anga tarisa pasa. Saka wana wana wafamba ruendo rurefu, muna kaneta. Saka panda muka kusenda, vana nyora pa Facebook, kuti, ah, and I don't know, kuti, eh, ayi era soko, ayi era soko, mkanya ere. Sanda zona confirmation or it are definitely Ayeram Kanya. Saka zine za shore wa nai. Anzi mkoma uguisa magoro kodo tapida tapida asinya ye kuti. Max i mnu kuisa. Ex. Sorry, sorry. Ah, na. Ada pizza ancha ziti. I'm not going to do it again. I thought maybe it was just a. Ngotu honot. Ah. Magoro kodo. Eh. Mface and on ah, warora and so forth. Anyway, that is not the topic of the day. So we are talking about the, the assassination of uh, Chitepo. So what did um, the President Kenneth Kaunda's message to the nation say? So this is what we are going to uh, to talk about. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So uh, let's hear what uh, he actually said. Uh, his address to the nation was Countrymen, comrades, and friends. Countrymen, comrades, and friends. So before I start, guys, I want you to tag a lot of people because this is the chance that we spread this word. Uh, to the world the world should know this thank you the world should know this so it's countrymen uh, comrades and friends as you know Zambia recently witnessed one of the worst criminal acts perpetrated against the people of Zimbabwe and their strategy their struggle and against Zambia's boundless efforts in support of the liberation struggle. This was the brutal assassination of the late Herbert Chitepo, one of the most leading nationalists of Zimbabwe. We are shocked. We are still grieved and angered. We remain bitter. The murderous act, bitter against the murderous act, bitter against the murderers themselves, the enemies of Zimbabwe revolution, the enemies of Zambia, the enemies of Africa. Many Zambians are to say the least very dismayed and justifiably irritated by statements made by some Zimbabwe nationals. Some even nationalist leaders have shown no concern whatsoever for the assassination of Mr. Chitepo. To them, Mr. Chitepo has been assassinated and that must be the last or that must be the end. Instead of calling upon the party and the government to track down the killers of this gallant fighter, 
they are either completely silent while others virtually demanded that we stop the investigation altogether and thereby shelter the assassins and their imperialist paymasters. This is really asking imperialists and racism to continue corrupting the minds of freedom fighters and to deal a heavy blow on our struggle. We can we stop the investigation? Can we stop the investigation? Can we stop the investigation? I say categorically no. We are going ahead with full strength till we find the culprits and identify the real agent bent on disrupting the armed struggle. These were the words, gentlemen, by His Excellency Kenneth Kaunda. He went on to say, Why must the investigation continue? Why must the investigation continue? One, because Mr. Chitepo was not an animal. He was first and foremost a normal human being. This is why this investigation must never be stopped. The gentleman who was assassinated was not an animal. The gentleman who was assassinated was a normal human being. So an investigation must ensue. Point number two. He was a prominent leader of his people. A fighter for peace. Freedom and justice. Mr. Chitepo was a leader of his people. He was a fighter for peace, freedom and justice. He sacrificed so much in his own life for the good of the people of Zimbabwe. So this investigation must go ahead. Point number three. Point number three. He was not killed in the battlefield, but at his house. Not inside Zimbabwe, but on Zambian soil. So we are taking full responsibility for finding the culprits. Under our law, murder is a grave offense punishable by death. So we are, or we have a duty to find the culprits and that duty we will fulfill it. But let me say this. We know ultimately this responsibility for the tragic and untimely death of Mr. Chitepo squarely rests on Ian Smith's shoulders. He cannot escape that responsibility. Smith created the unhealthy condition which led Mr. Chitepo to leave his motherland. Smith declared UDI, which has led to the bitter armed conflict between African nationalists and the rebel regime. Smith has left only one way to achieve peace based on majority rule, and that is violence, which in process has taken Mr. Chitepo's life. Thus, Mr. Chitepo's assassins 
are clearly the creation of Ian Smith. It is our national and international duty to seek these agents out, expose them and bring them to book. We have a duty to investigate the cause of Mr. Chitepo's death. And we intend to carry out that investigation with the thoroughness of a tooth comb. We will have no, or we will leave no stone untamed. We have already taken some measures. We have rounded up a number of people, including some Rhodesian nationals and their leaders. In the present conditions, we must take into account the following things. 1. A. Smith has agents among freedom fighters, just as we know of his agents among Zambians. B. Imperialists have agents among freedom fighters, as they have among Zambians. C. Among those who shout loudest about revolution and armed struggle are found well camouflaged, the most dangerous counter revolutionaries and the saboteurs. D. Reactions often hide behind revolutionary rhetoric to cover up their counter revolutionary and diabolical intentions and actions reactionary are in fact designed to take the to take the masses along the wrong political line and lead fighters into an ambush by the enemy finally e it requires no special talent to criticize and insult even the stupid the ignorant and the insane can and do criticize. Zambians must not be unduly perturbed by the insults. Ladies and gentlemen, we know we are a, we are a sovereign state, a sovereign state. We are independent. We want others to attain independence. We are committed to give all possible assistance uh, to the oppressed in order to overthrow their oppressors and achieve independence like us. We have demonstrated in practical terms our commitment to the cause of oppressed in Southern Africa and elsewhere in the world. No prize has been too high to pay for the freedom of others. In this great African endeavor to liberate the rest of Africa, there is a struggle, there is no struggle which has been as expensive for Zambia, expensive for Zambia is that currently waged in Zimbabwe. We have spent millions of watchers. We have lost some lives and property to assist the Zimbabweans in their liberation struggle than we have lost in the armed struggle to free Mozambique and Angola. The sacrifice we have made in terms of development is greater in respect of Zimbabwe than the amount of sacrifice made in the struggle for independence in Mozambique and Angola. Zimbabweans themselves know, know that whatever success have been achieved in the armed struggle have depended on what sacrifice Zambians have been able to make. 
We do not dispute the fact that the future of Zimbabwe will be decided by Zimbabweans. This is what we are fighting for. But it is a fact that no country, no people in the world, apart from Zimbabweans themselves, have suffered more for the freedom of Zimbabwe than Zambians. We have paid and we will continue to pay a just price for the freedom of our brothers and sisters. But to suggest that we are frustrating the struggle by investigating the assassination of Mr. Chitepo is not only to show no regard for, his for this prominent leader, but also to add very grave insult to the irreparable injuries sustained by Zambians in their unequivocal support for majority rule in Zimbabwe. We have nothing to hide from Zimbabwe, the OAU and the world. I have thus, on behalf of the part, government and people of Zambia, decided to establish a special commission of inquiry to carry out the investigation. The special commission will consist of a team selected from UNIP, Central Committee and Cabinet. I am also inviting some members of the OAU Liberation Committee and its executive secretary, as well as representatives of Botswana, Zaire, Congo Brazzaville, Malawi, Tanzania, Flerimo, to be members of the special commission. Zambia Security Services will be at the disposal of the commission in its investigation. I want the special commission to thoroughly study the events leading to Mr. Chitepo's death. To this end, I invite anyone anywhere in Zambia, Zimbabwe, and the rest of the world who has any evidence to help the Commission to come forward. I especially invite leaders in Zimbabwe and their compatriots in the world who feel very strongly about our actions to come to Zambia and give the Commission the facts. We will provide a full report to the OAU following the findings of the Commission. As always, as always, we in Zambia want to be completely honest about the recent events. We will be honest in the interest of the struggle. We have vowed to support until victory is won in Zimbabwe. At the same time, this inqu inquiry will not interfere with the criminal proceedings through a court of law if the assassins are found. We view Mr. Chitepo's death with utmost gravity. Finally, let me say that we understand the situation in, in Southern Africa. We understand this situation very well. We know what we are doing. We know every step we are taking. The armed struggle in Zimbabwe has not ended. It will continue. It will be intensified unless majority rule is achieved. Smith must not be under any illusions, whatever. 1975 is a year of decision. Only this positive decision can be can help avert the escalation of war which he is bound to lose. Victory is on the side of the majority and Zambia will spare no efforts and no time to guarantee that victory. It will spare no efforts and time to guarantee the victory. I call upon Zambians and the rest of Africa to rally together and unite their efforts 
to bring about the victory over Jew. With God's guiding hand and his inspiration, we will win as long as we are united in our national and international purpose. God bless the Republic of Zambia. Good night. <laughs> this was a special message read broadcasted by <coughs> His Excellency President Kenneth Kaunda. He addressed this to the nation. Wakaunda Wakaunda right out to the nation Wakat Zambia. He suffered a lot. But the way Zambia has suffered is, is going to co continue with the struggle in Zimbabwe until Zimbabwe attain majority rule. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, wherever you are this evening, I want you to listen again to this statement. Rewind, listen to it again, and compare it with the current situation in Zimbabwe, which require effort of every Zimbabwe to make sure that we bring freedom to the country. People are not going to stop because President Kaunda said the victory or the masses will image victors. So count yourself among the masses and fight for the freedom of Zimbabwe. It's not only for Chamisa to stand up and fight the oppressive regime of Emerson Munangagwa, but it's for you and me to stand up together and fight the oppressive regime of Dambuzo Munangagwa. Zitare kuti dambudzo ndo rakari sita rake ndo saka mchona mchitambudzwa ino rekuti Emerson hanza kazotora mbuku averenga o buku rakanyorwa na Emerson saka rake charichero kutambudza vanhu so we need to stand up against this kutambudza and oppression ladies and gentlemen appendix 2 was a list of witnesses i am going to read the witnesses who were Someone to give evidence by this commission. The first witness to give evidence was Bishop, Ab Bishop Abel Muzorewa, followed by Joshua Nkomo, Reverend Abaning Stole, James Robert Dambazachkerim, Dixon Mupundu, Roderick Chaya. Simpson Victor Mtambanengwe, Musiani Kalekwa Simumba, Stanford Batuo Mwenda, George Nyandoro, Andrew John Zengeni, Cornelius Martin Ditima Sanyanga, John Hughes Remba, John Landa Nkomo, Obed Majgandu, Mukuzei Muzi, Richard Wove, Joseph Amudivame, Amudivame, Muchabaiwa Masango Mai, Joseph Amudivame, Muchabaiwa Masango Mai, Samuel Geza, Stanley Garkai Parirewa, Chemist Nue, Sam Chandawa, Peter Sheba, Josiah Magama, Tongo Gara, Daniel Chilonda Kwanso, Jefferson Mawere, Reverend Shelley Deminson Nyamroa, Washington Malianga, Kumbira Ikangai, Rugare Gumbo, Mutuku Koera Hamaziripi, Miss Victoria Chitepo, Anzi chupo, chupo shumba chigowe, chigowe oi. Chupo, shumba, chigowe. 
Alec Dovi, Martin Constantine Mulopa, Judah Mulomba, Abia Joseph Siwiti, Mark Chunyu Chona, Sadat Kufama Zuba, Robson Manyika, na Joseph Chimurenga. Ladies and gentlemen, Joseph Chimurenga is the person who planted the bomb on Chitepo's car on the orders of Rex Nongo. Mabaya wa maiti mjuru. Ndoo waka gazi la bomba. Raka enda rikano bomba tongo gara. Muna gaisa bomba is Joseph Chimurenga. Ndiya kano planta bomba racho iroro. Uyanonzi chukupo shumba chukowe. Ndiya ichera ma freedom fighters ne piki. Achuraya. Wana mjiga anzi mjiga anzi mdara uyo. Waka chera ne piki waka muraya waka muviga in a shallow grave. So all these guys, they came, they gave evidence. Names of witnesses who were represented by council. Mukuzeimuz was represented by Miss Beatrice Ngonomo. Samuel Geza was represented by Beatrice Ngonomo again. Josiah Magama Tongogara was represented by the same lawyer. Kangai e, Rugare Gumbo Wakanga wane Gwetari Mwechete Saka waiti e, Muku Zemuz Samuel Geza Joseph Magama Tongo Gara Na kumbira, kumbira Kangai na Rugare Gumbo Were all represented by a solicitor Miss Beatrice Ngonomo Henry Ama Ziripi was represented by Philip Banda of Banda and Kamban. Shlupo Chigowe was represented by Beatrice Ngonomo. Alec Dovi was represented by Mr. George Walisko of Walisko and Kamban. Sadat was represented by Nko Ngonomo. Robson Manika was represented by George Walisko and Joseph Chimurenga also represented by George Walisko. This was Appendix 2, ladies and gentlemen, of the witnesses who were summoned by the commission to come and give evidence. And most of them were represented. Parapa tawana three lawyers or three or four lawyers kuti uyani zani Beatrice Ngonomo kaka rika mskana kasa tika mbururu waka kashumoko kai representa madara kwa zaya Philip Banda of Banda in the Kamban kwa kuzoya Walisko Walisko in Kamban George Walisko in Kamban these three solicitors represented some of these witnesses when they were giving evidence to the commission. Appendix 3 Zimbabwe Declaration of Unit made at Lusaka, Republic of Zambia on 7th December 1974 Kupera kwa Gorana 1974 Zanu Zapu Floriz and ANC hereby agreed to unite in the name of ANC. These four parties agreed to unite in the name of ANC. The parties, this was, this was at the end of 1974 in December. The parties recognize the ANC as the unifying force of the people of Zimbabwe. They agree to consolidate the leadership of the ANC and the inclusion into it the presidents of ZANU, ZAPU and Flores under the chairmanship of the president of ANC. The enlarged ANC executive 
shall we have the following functions? A. To prepare for any conference for the transfer of power to the majority and might be called. B. To prepare for the holding of a congress within four months at which a revised ANC constitution shall be adopted. The leading of the United People of Zimbabwe shall be elected. The leadership. A statement of police for the new ANC will be considered. To organize the people for such conference and congress. The leadership of Zapu, Zanu and Flores call upon their supporters and all Zimbabweans to rally behind the ANC under its enlarged executive. Zapu, Zanu and Flores will take steps to merge their respective organs and structures into the ANC before the Congress to be held within four months. The leadership recognizes the, inev the inevitability of continued armed struggle and all other forms of struggle until the total liberation of Zimbabwe. This unit accord or this declaration of unit was signed by Abel Tendekai Mzorewa, president of ANC, signed by Ndabaning Stole, president of ZANU, signed by Joshua Mkabu Konkomo, president of ZAPU, and signed, signed by James Chikerema, who was president of Flores. They signed this uh, declaration of unit at the State House in Zambia. Appendix 3 Appendix 3 Zimbabwe Appendix 3 is oh, this is the Appendix 3. I don't know. They could have made an error here. Appendix 3 I've done it. And they printed it twice. It's very unfortunate. Sorry guys. Appendix 4 is, Appendix 4 is Solisbury Declaration. Right. Recognize the paramount need for unit in Zimbabwe liberation struggle. The executive committees of Zapu, Zanu, Flores and ANC have met in Lusaka to discuss the aims, objectives and methods to be pursued. Full agreement was reached to the following points. Point number one. We have agreed to unite under one organization with immediate effect. We have agreed further that the organization shall be the Africa, African National Council. Not Cong ANC in South Africa is Congress. This one is Council. African National Council. We shall be working for the for the independence of our country we assume what we assume that on this demand for independence there is no difference among Rhodesians of all races but there has until now been a difference on the kind of independence which Zimbabweans must have the Rhodesian front has in the past sought independence on the basis of minority rule, we reject that. The independence we still need, we still seek, is independence on the basis of majority rule. This was a very good aim, ladies and gentlemen. An aim that the freedom fighters were seeking an independence on the basis of majority rule. Until today, 
Zimbabweans are not independent on the uh, on the basis of uh, majority rule. The rule that we see in Zimbabwe today is not majority rule at all. It's far fetched from majority rule. So Zimbabweans are not under majority rule, which the freedom fighters seek to, to attain. For the purpose of achieving that objective, we have always been ready to enter into negotiations with others concerned. Now that some of us have been released from detention, we believe the time is ripe for us to repeat this offer without preconditions as both sides we are ready to enter into a med immediate and meaningful negotiations with leaders of the Rhodesian Front and with the British government in Britain on the steps of the on the steps to be taken to achieve independence on the basis of majority rule. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the idea that Douglas Monzora thinks is selling a new idea to the people of Zimbabwe to try and negotiate with the ZANU PF. The time of negotiations, I think they are over. The time of dialogue with the ZANU PF, I think they are over. This is not the time to dialogue with the ZANU PF. It's the time to take action against the ZANU PF, not to dialogue with the ZANU PF. This dialoguing with the ZANU PF is an old idea. Zimbabweans have dialogued with the ZANU. For the past 20 years, there were dialogues and dialogues which produced no, 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 no results. People of Zimbabwe are still not free. So we cannot continue to dialogue and dialogue and dialogue without fruits. I don't think the idea that this Monzora bought from Zorewa is the good idea of dialoguing with the ZANU PF. There is total no need to dialogue with this with the ZANU PF at this juncture. The point number four is a demonstration of our sincerity. All freedom fighters will be instructed as soon as a date for negotiations have been fixed to suspend the fighting. We are <clears throat> not racialists. We accept the right of white Rhodesians to live in Rhodesia and share the same rights and obligations of citizenship as their fellow Rhodesian of the black majority community. Without any discrimination on grounds of race, color, or creed. We call upon all Rhodesians and all those who reside in Rhodesia to remain calm, maintain peace, and to go about their normal business while these matters are being considered and while in negotiations are proceeding. We call upon all Zimbabweans, wherever they are, to remain united behind the demand for independence on the basis of majority rule and to give full support to the African National Council. We appeal to all our friends in Africa and abroad to continue their support for our struggle until independence is achieved on the basis of majority rule. This majority rule never came, ladies and gentlemen. This Solisbury Agreement, it was signed by Bishop Abe Otendeka in Zoreo. It was signed by Reverend Dabaning Stole. It was signed by Joshua Mkabu Kunkomo. It was signed by James 
Robert Dambaza Chikerema. Ladies and gentlemen, Appendix number five. This is a list of commissioners. Zambia was represented by Honorable Arasika Manga. A member of the Central Committee of United National Independence Party, being the chairperson. Zambia was also represented by Honorable M. M. Chona, who was, M, who was a member of parliament and also Minister of Legal Affairs and Attorney General. Botswana was represented by Honorable AUC Sikunyana, was also a member of parliament, a member of the Central Committee of Botswana Democratic Party. It was also represented by Mr. Ile Gwaila, Senior State Council. Libya was represented by His Excellency Ishmael Sedik Ben Ismail. Ismail Sedik Ben Ismail who was an ambassador. Malawi was represented by Honorable A. E. Gandama, member of parliament, who was also minister without portfolio. Malagas was represented by His Excellence, H. D. Bas Mbayafi, who was also ambassador. Morocco was represented by His Excellence, Abdelaziz Jamai was also an ambassador. Mozambique was represented by Mr. Sanjo Vieira, special assistant to the president. Samora Marshall. Organization of African Union and Liberation Committee. It was represented by Lieutenant Colonel Ai Mbita was its executive central executive secretary Sierra Leone was represented by Ndugu was sorry guys it was represented by Mr Sufi charge the affair Mr S Sufi was the charge the affair Tanzania had two representatives one was Ndugu Bashe Mikadad, member of Central Committee for Tanu. The second one was Ndugu J.S. Warioba, Aton General. Zaire, the one you call DRC today, it was represented by His Excellency Bando Larit Nyarende, Ambassador. And also, Sition Malangola Shambui was the first secretary. So these were the countries that sent delegates or commissioners and these were the commissioners who participated in the production of this report after an investigation was carried out uh, to the assassination of Chitepo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of this report. This is the final episode of the report on the assassination of Yebet Chitepo. Republic of Zambia, report of the Special International Commission on the assassination of Yebet Wilshire Chitepo. Lusaka, March 1976 is when this report was handed over to His Excellency Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the report that I've serialized from one to seven series. And these uh, episodes can be found on YouTube. 
you subscribe on Shepherd Yuda, then you can follow all the episodes at once so that you can have an insight on how Chitepo was assassinated. So the death of Herbert Wilshire at Chitepo on Tuesday, the 18th of March 1975, at about 800 uh, what about 800 hours that was in the morning? An explosion occurred at number 150 Muramba Road, Chilenge, South Lusaka. The house of the late Mr. Herbert Wilshire Chitepo, former national chairman of Zimbabwe African National Union and a leading personality in the enlarged African National Council, ANC which came into being in the in this on the 7th of December 1974 Chitepo and his bodyguard Silas Shamiso died as a result of this explosion and a third person a young Zambian who called Sambwa Chaya of number 148 Maramba Road Chilenge South died later at the university teaching hospital in Lusaka. He died, succumbed from injuries sustained as a result of the explosion. Sadati Kafuma Zuba, another bodyguard of Chitepo, also sustained a serious injuries during the explosion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the true account of things that happened pakura uh, wa kwa chitepo nanzi namkoma henry musika vanhu musaterera ngano dzekusheki sheki building jongwe house vanhu variko they are calling themselves rambos why forgot my actors and this and that uh, this report i understand it was even given to the rhodesians and the zimbabwean uh, minister they've got this report but this report was kept silent and these people did not want anything in this report to be known they even wanted to stop the investigation but they did not value Chitepo they said Chitepo uh, was the leader of the Manikas in the Nari rebellion and I say, Guru, sorry, I'm late. I'm sorry. I'm not going to talk about Guru. Saga and Akto Pedza. I've read this report page to page, back to back. I did not add anything to this report. So if you want the true account of how Chitepo was assassinated, you can visit Shepard Yuda YouTube. Subscribe to that YouTube. If you subscribe, then you can listen to all these um, episodes at your own time. Don't hurry, don't rush. You've got all the time in the world to listen to exactly what transpired uh, with Chitepa Azofa. Uh, coming to the killing of Tongogara, uh, people think Tongogara's death is an accident. But to me, I don't think it's an accident. This was a true assassination of Tongoga. Why? If I look at the people who accompanied Tongoga from Mozambique, they made sure that if Tongoga goes by air, they were not going to kill him. So this is why they to propose that Tongoga travel by road, so that they've got ample time all the way from Mozambique to Zimbabwe to make sure the boy is assassinated. And I don't buy the point that Tongo Gara would be the only person to die in an accident, leaving Opa Mchinguri. And also being a Manika, Opa, obvious, wanted to eliminate the Karanga. And Tongo Gara had previously expressed a desire to be the first president of Zimbabwe and he said he was going to attain that president by the barrel of the gun 
ladies and gentlemen. This is a clear indication that ZANU PF was fed up with the Tongo Gara. Considering how many people Tongo Gara had murdered at Chifombo and in Zambia, Tongo Gara and Manika, Robson Manika. Last time I spoke a lot about Robson Manika. I met Robson Manika in Nini, Nishiruk Manosh Koro Karoyu. Robson Manika Aga Uya Karoyi, my days, my distance. I got Ungan Zavanu, Mustadia Mukaroy, my dust. But my churro is what passed him, so the Pasinangomo, Nangomo, Pasinangomo, Nangomo, and she got a dust together flu. So I got my Zoe Covid, and I take a door of Pasin Covid. And then we're gone. So there is no question who killed Tongo Gar. And there is no question why Tongo Gar was killed. I read one comment from someone who said Tongo Gara was as good as Masendeke. That guy wrote this uh, comment this afternoon. That I used to regard Tongo Gara as a hero. But after this truth, this report from Zambia, we no longer regard Tongo Gara as a hero. A lot of guys who were supporting Zanu Pevajinji, their fathers were murdered. In this, in this struggle. So some people were now saying, why did the Zimbabwe government yend if they had more Masendekes around them? Wana Daura Manzi, Wakangawari is equivalent to the Masendeke. And these guys, they were just kept and nothing was done to them. So, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, if you are in Zimbabwe, Fungagudi, are we a free country? Did we attain independence, freedom, and justice? These things did. These things never came. There is no justice in our country, where opposition political leaders are being arrested on daily basis. Naona, the likes of Joanna Mamombe, Cecilia, and that other girl were arrested again. The event that made them to be arrested was attended by even Love More Maduku. Surprisingly, Maduku was never picked. He even challenged the police to say, why are you picking them? Why not me? You are picking these girls. Why are you picking at them? Why are you detaining them? I even attended the function myself. And you can't arrest me. You just want to arrest these girls. So there is no justice in Zimbabwe. There is no peace in our country. There is no freedom in Zimbabwe. So we want to attain our freedom. We want to attain our peace. We want to attain justice in our country. How are we going to attain that? We have tried everything that is necessary to attain those three elements which forms a, a society. And you look at what Kenneth Kaunda was saying. Kenneth Kaunda was saying, we are not going to stop the armed struggle. The armed struggle is not going to end until those important elements are attained by the black majority rule in Zimbabwe. We are not, we Zimbabweans today, we are too soft. We are not engaged in armed struggle. We have abandoned the military way of dealing with the ZANU PF. We embarked on a political way of attaining independence. My question to you today is this. If Zanu PF took over 15 years fighting the Rhodesian uh, front, fighting the what they call imperialists, they took 15 years fighting every day in the bush in a Golira warfare to dislodge Ian Smith. 
Now, Zimbabweans have seen no need of armed struggle. And the Zimbabweans have embarked on a political front where they are not even throwing stones, where they are not even firing any gun. But they are saying, let's attain our freedom, our justice and peace peacefully. Let's challenge them in an election, one man, one vote. Unfortunately, ZANU-PF has removed that freedom or that democratic right of one man, one vote. They rig elections in every election. They steal your vote in every election. They kill Zimbabweans even if they try to protest that our vote was stolen. We have recently seen in 2018 ZANU-PF turning CBD Harare into a battlefield where soldiers adopted kneeling position aiming at fleeing civilians and firing at them, sending live bullets to the fleeing civilians, killing them. It was repeated again on the 14th of January 2019, where soldiers went door to door in Zimbabwe, killing innocent civilians. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is a political party Zanu PF that we thought brought independence to our country when we are being shot at the back whilst fleeing the army. Are we independent? Are we independent? Soldiers' presence only among us civilians, soldiers carrying weapons, that was, an, that was enough intimidation to let those people flee. flee. And the intention to disperse them was to make them flee. And they made those people flee. And those people were running away. Why did they shoot them? Why did Zimbabwe soldiers fired at fleeing civilians, unarmed civilians? Are we a free country? Did we attain independence? Is there any justice in our country? Out of all those soldiers, we can identify them. Not even one of them was brought before the courts. And you saw a soldier adopting a sniper's position, kneeling position, aiming at fleeing citizens and firing at them, aiming at one, 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 sending bullets, killing them. What was the intention of Zimbabwe government killing protesters? Their stupid excuse. In Libya, they killed protesters. In Britain, they are killing protesters. In America, they are killing protesters. Are we Americans? Are we British? Are we Libyans? Why can't we do our own things as Zimbabweans? Why are we killing one another? Why is the government sending soldiers to kill innocent people? That is a question people should dwell on or debate on. What can we do as Zimbabweans? Because we need to defend ourselves. We need to defend our mothers. We need to defend our families, our brothers, our sisters. How are we going to defend them? I leave this question to you, ladies and gentlemen. That shall we continue to be butchered by the government? Shall we continue to be shot at when we tell them we are hungry? Shall we continue to be killed by the regime because we need jobs? We need something to eat. Shall we continue to be silenced by the military? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a multi-million dollar question to you. To say, I am saying, Zimbabwe is under a terrorist government. A good example was in Afghanistan. Afghanistan was under a terrorist organization that was hanging people on daily basis. The British, the Americans, 
They sent soldiers to help Afghan people. They fought the terrorists until they defeated them. What are we waiting for in our country? The British are seeing it. The Americans are seeing it. That the Zimbabweans are being shot at. That is the Zimbabweans are being killed. But we are getting no assistance to try and fight those terrorists. This is the reason why you see the British government. They imposed targeted sanctions against those terrorist leaders. This is why you see even the Americans imposed the sanctions against those terrorist leaders. Because they know that those people are terrorists. So my question to you, Zimbabwe, until when can we continue to be terrorized? We have been killed from the day one MDC was formed. Every year we bury MDC people. And today you have seen even Vanalili and Timovic being availed to be ZANU-PF uh, people. So I say to Lillian Timovis, Timovias, uh, go and show them that you came from MDC Alliance. Show them that in MDC Alliance we've got all the leadership that is required in the country. You have seen how happy Zanupiev was today to receive Lillian Timovias. In Zishawan. They really know that themselves do not have leadership qualities and they are outsourcing MDC Alliance leadership so that they can strengthen Zanu PF. So I say to Lilian Timovich, go well, go show Zanu, Zanu PF people that you came from a well disciplined part, a part that does not use that does not use violence, a part that, that does not kill people. A part that has got thousands and thousands of people who qualify to be a president to run Zimbabwe. So go to Lillian Timovias, go campaign, be the next president of Zimbabwe in ZANU PF. You've got the qualities, you've got the ability. ZANU PF does not have quality people to put in those positions. This is why, you see, even their information department relies on Mugwadi, who was MDC youth. Now they are relying on Chebundo and Timivias. They can elect Chebundo to be their president. Chebundo has twice or three times defeated Emerson Mnangagwa. So if you look at Chebundo and Mnangagwa, who is worthy to be ZANU-PF president, I would push Chebundo to be the president because he has... He has defeated Mnangagwa on several occasions. So ZANU PF has outsourced leadership from MDC Alliance. Unfortunately, today they attacked the chairwoman. They sent the Ferret Force with arms to go and attack a woman, Tabita Kumalo, a woman who was attacked by the Ferret Forces. Because she refused to go, to, she refused to join Zanu PF. She refused to be availed as Zanu PF uh, supporter. Tabuta Kumalo said no, and they sent the Ferret Force to attack her. So we are dealing with uh, a, a terrorist organization that is trying to force every MDC Alliance leader to come and join them. So to Lillian Timovias, I say, go well, go well. Go show them that you are a disciplined cadre. Show them that you came from MDC Alliance, where we don't use the violence, where we don't coerce people to voters. So go show them quality leadership. To Chebudo, I say, go campaign to be the president of ZANU. You deserve it. Because you have defeated Emerson Mnangagwa four or three times in a row. So, compared to Chebundo and Mnangagwa, Chebundo will be the next president of ZANU-PF. ZANU-PF lacks quality. This is why you see the outsource from MDC Alliance. Mugwadi was from MDC. Timivias is from MDC. Chebundo defeated Mnangagwa three times in MDC. So, we have got quality leaders in MDC than in ZANU-PF. 
Even if I go join Zanu PF today, I'll be, I'll be, I'll, 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 I'll be, I'll be probably their president. I'll be probably their president because there are no people like Shepard Yuda in Zanu. They lack quality. They've got quantity and lack quantity quality. You have seen their youth flashing drugs, driving cars in Arare, flashing on a meta, meta, metamorphosing, on a cocaine. But it seems that is not quality we look for leadership when we consider leadership. So Zanu PF is trying, is trying to outsource leadership from MDC. So to those lucky, to those who joined Zanu PF, I say go well. Go show them your your quality that you learned from uh, President Nelson Chamisa. You were groomed, Tim Vias. You learned a lot from MDC Alliance. You learned what is democracy in MDC. So go show ZANU-PF people what is democracy. And don't forget to tell them to vote MDC. Don't forget to tell those in ZANU-PF to vote MDC. Please, Lillian, Tell them, tell them to change their way of doing things. Tell them to stop violence. Tell them to stop terrorizing citizens. You cannot force a citizen to like you or to vote for you when he doesn't want to do it. So Lillian Timovias, you are like an ambassador of MDC Alliance to ZANU. You are like an ambassador of MDC Alliance to ZANU. Blessing Chebundo, you are like an ambassador of MDC to ZANU. You are representatives of MDC in ZANU PF. Go show them how we did our politics. Go show them how you defeated Emerson Munangagwa. Because you used no violence and the people loved you so much. So go and be an ambassador of MDC in ZANU PF. To those who are joining ZANU PF, because we have got, we, we gained thousands and thousands from ZANU PF who came to join MDC. Atete Linda, I really understand your anger, but these are ambassadors of MDC Alliance or MDC to ZANU PF. They are going to go to Chitepo, go to Chitepo, and uh, the Chitepo School of Ideology. They are going to see why ZANU PF is so violent. What is there? And uh, probably they are going to change ZANU PF ideologies and thinking. Because if you look at Mugwadi, I was shocked yesterday that Mugwadi diverted from the from his views. He's talking about one part state in Zimbabwe. A dream that will never come true. Mugabe fought for 40 years trying to bring one party state. Dismantled every political party that was formed in Zimbabwe in a bid to introduce one party state. And it failed. So a baby who is a product of MDC cannot force one party state. He really knows it. He really knows what M how MDC does its business. And that one party state is just a, a, a masturbating dream. It's like Urgurota, Wararan Mvet, Yogaran, Uruwe, Gogeta C. It's just, an, th those are weight dreams. It's unfortunate to say that this boy is still at the edge of weight dreams. He will never attain a one party state in Zimbabwe. Never in a million years. You understand what I mean? And we understand that the surrogates, like the Douglas Monzoras, they are not going anywhere. Mark my words. I was looking at the results that Monzora attained at, at a congress in Gweru. I was also looking at the results that Monzora attained at Arara International uh, Conference Center. The results, they are not different. In Igueru, he got about 700 votes. In the International Center, he got about 800 votes. So the same people that voted Monzora 
and Gweru are the same people who voted him at HICC and it does not change anything. This figure is stagnant and the moon's is a nonanity. He cannot match President Nelson Chamisa. So, ladies and gentlemen, these ZANU-PF uh, people are in a dreamland. The one party state that they are talking about is just a wet dream. Nothing will come out of that. Sakandichiti nini machinja, maitiro ako, hizuko, ndapeza. My name is Shepard Yuda. The seventh episode of our, our report has ended. So I encourage each and every one of you to go to YouTube, subscribe, give me power to continue doing more videos for you guys. Because if you don't give me power, but maybe someone will prop up who can help you with uh, distribution of information. Inform remember, information is power. Remember this report, ZANU-PF did not want it to be made public. And in Gaguza, I opened ZANU-PF for the past three days, made different people. I had one person who dreamed in Zimbabwe. I need a good or Tema Tema Nema Bemba Shepard. So always what Tema Tema Nema Bemba. And then I, my, my daughter dreamed Naga Fandrim Coffin, Naga Temu Wam Soro Ne Bemba. In Indagarota and Zuro, Marmazur, Nanura Mumfura, Bandaganuru Nuru, and Omar Rungoga Zondora, Bagansama plugs Munu, and Anak Femanu Vandi Buritsa. So these are bad dreams which are being dreamed by people. And such bad dreams are consolidated today. Never know now picture. Yana so ta bana chato mchato wako nuchikisa kuda iso. Bana no like a mchato uya. Bana so ungoro ora mchato wena zona. Munanga chato wana yaba is my ex-girlfriend. Bana kuti makuru kote. Hey mchato wako kana giza. Nufu wako kana giza mchato yo. Nufu wana blokwa. So ladies and gentlemen. Pray for me. Because the Verenga report, I've serialized it. And YouTube will be there for the next 1,000 years or so, or a million years. These videos are going to be viewed by the future generations. But watch Verenga, these videos, they are not going to be removed from YouTube. You understand? So this mark, the scar that I've put on ZANU-PF, it's a scar for life. Yeah, definitely they will never want this report to be made public. And I've made this report public. That means all those in America, all over the world, they are going to listen to this serialization. Make them more popular. Share them. So that every Zimbabwean anywhere around the world knows exactly what transpired Pagurawa Shtepo and how Zanu PF does its business. The the bagayu boom, bagayu boom, the killing of freedom fighters. When we are saying we are fighting for we are fighting the imperialist back in our country. Some people never visited the front line. Wondo chaya wato is zivi. Wondo chaya wato is zivi. Awana kutumbenda ku wondo kuno irwa. Waka songo ya wadada ma president. Pa waka nzendai front line wana tongo gara waka my life is in danger. He couldn't go front line kunurua wondo. So ladies and gentlemen. Ap mno so da choko adisha kaita se. Nda peza. Gaiti zoti the other day kana nri free to batai tata zokerera the escape of chidumo. Masendege pesai msariri and maanzinguluwe. So zonyasu itaura taknyasu kuyenda. Nemo nemo kutivano wanyasu nzugisisa because it's by public demand. So I think I'm going to do it on YouTube but I'll connect it to the Facebook. So go subscribe for tomorrow. Subscribe for tomorrow. Those who did not subscribe, subscribe for tomorrow. I'll do the live ya Chidumo, Masendeke, Musariri, 
Nachauge, I'm going to do it from YouTube account, not from a Facebook page. So subscribe there. We meet there tomorrow. I thank you. As even when Jesus comes, take us home. <laughs> we will see videos in heaven, definitely. Sano has copied a China system of running a government. That's why they are failing to dismally. They want the, the Chinese, the reason. I was talking to this guy, Ashtaura Ninyaya Matractors, Arugunza Anza Arugu Debe. Because Matractors, Anoyaga Assembliwa. My buses, Anoyaga Assembliwa. They've got no use to Zimbabwe. Anongo Shiga Orima Ofa, Zatopera. But we need to assemble our own buses. We need to assemble our own tractors so that we can create market in Sadak. Tishiteng Sama Tractor Anoyaga Assembliwa in Zimbabwe. Nema Bazi. Not my bus, are we assembly? They've got no use to Zimbabwe. I create employment. And we also create a wind. Na mechanic one shot of air. Truda would create employment. Assembly with Zimbabwe. When I write my engineering skills, my investors are shandy. Yes, when I'm going to go there, they've got no practical experience of doing anything. But I'm going to come and I'm going to employ one. You understand? So we are in a mess as a country. Ladies and gentlemen, Ningata Orisa, enjoy your day, enjoy your night. My name is Shepard Yuda. Good night. Night, night, good night. <laughs>